So entry process since pandemic has kind of changed a little bit, obviously. Um, things have kind of needed to go a bit different. I think the Bergen only could have opened without a mask mandate anyway. It's impossible. If you've seen the club, if you've been anywhere near it, you know that it's impossible to do any sort of social dis social distancing. It's impossible to have your mask on in there. It just doesn't make any sense. So if they were going to open, they need to open with um, maybe limited capacity and maybe this improved ventilation system that they've been talking about, I've been hearing them saying. So that was the only way that it was going to go forward. And then, of course, vaccine passports to ensure that everyone who's going in there is fully vaccinated because there's no other way. Because I think recently there was an outbreak there recently so you know if you just would have said people can come in who haven't been vaccinated it would have been probably even higher in a massive outbreak before so whatever so you basically have to register yourself um you basically have to make sure you have a covid vaccine basically you know to get into the club uh have your vaccine covid vaccine passport i'm obviously from the uk so i have an nhs pass which is fine to go in with i think if you read that on the website it does list in a small print that maybe it's a case-by-case -case basis about nhs passes but when you actually go to the venue itself they've got a board on the outside that kind of lays down the steps of what you need to do in order to get in and it basically clearly says in one of the brackets that you know you can basically get in with a vaccine passport from the nhs so that's pretty much easy to do you also have to bring along your id um it has to be your real id i, I didn't know but but supposedly you could bring your photocopy of your passport or a picture of it but now because obviously we're living in the pandemic times you have to bring your actual physical passport with you id so you can have it obviously have that matched up you've got to register yourself on the burgine app and you get scanned in with that also and that's basically it you spend most of your time queuing they've got a queuing system there that's pretty easy to kind of get around um to kind of understand they've got some railings that you need to get on that are obviously always there all the time and now they've got these extra railings that they put in place too that go right towards the end next to where all the kiosks are and the little kind of stands that people sell food and shit is when i went on the sunday because i think the opening weekend was crazy for those stories of people waiting seven eight hours to club and party and again i'm a big fan of the club you've seen many videos or many clips from my podcast talking about it but even myself i've got to draw the line and say there's no place i'm gonna queue for more than four hours to get into maybe even more than two it's just not worth it especially in a city like berlin there's so many other blip great places that you can go to and have a good time in why would you want to waste you know eight hours of your holiday to walk clog queue outside somewhere that you're not even guaranteed to get into once you get into the front because obviously they have a very select um door picking policy so um or very strict door picking policy so with that being said um i was happy to i was happy to i'm happy to report back that the queuing the queuing system in general has kind of decreased it's a little bit less crazy than it was before again i heard stories people queuing for eight four hours before now i've heard the most i've heard someone said the queue was maybe about three and a half maybe four hours the most but for the most part if you arrive sometime between i'm gonna say 3 a.m mm, no let's call it 4 to 8 a.m on a sunday morning you can possibly get in under two hours i only had i only had to wait half an hour no one and one and a half i arrived there at 7 a.m i got in a half eight and it was a fairly easy queue and when i got there at half seven I stood right at the back so right where the fence ends where there's that board where you get to see all the list of what you need to do to get in that's where I stood and then once uh, you know as the queue started going down I started to expand to the end but it was a fairly quick queue I'm not going to lie um, a lot of it had to do with the fact that they were turning away quite a lot of people which was again quite I don't know what it is maybe because it's a post-covid thing I think before covid I was a little bit more it's as gay to say but i took some pride in the fact that every time i went i got selected to go in but this time around waiting in the queue you know after waiting so long and it's cold and shit i kind of felt bad for the people that are getting turned away and i also kind of felt as if like the whole store selecting thing is getting a little bit you know it's getting a little bit meh in general especially nowadays you know you have to think if you're willing to make the journey over to that country especially if you don't live there um and travel and all that stuff in queue during these kind of crazy times that we're living in put yourself at risk put your family's health at risk whatever right in terms of covid and whatnot um you're probably going there for the right reasons you're not going there just to go and fuck around so to have such a strict door policy off the back of that and during the time that we're in now it just feels it just feels a little bit insensitive it just feels a little bit tone deaf. It just feels a little bit unfair. It just feels like, again, it probably isn't. And you have to maintain your standards with what you're about is what you're about. You know, people would say um, there's a story about Studio 54, right? And that you, you, I think maybe that was might have been the first introduction of the Velvet Rope. I'm not too sure, right? The whole idea of an exclusive club with the select. I think that might have been. I'm not too sure if that is exactly it, how the history goes. But let's just, let's just imagine that it is. There's a story that says that allegedly the reason why 
254 ended up failing and going down a drain was because they started to become too exclusive and only catered to the select higher ups and people who they were in the club and what actually was the main genesis of why it was so great to be in there in the first place was that they had a good mix of like regulars of like you know normal quote unquote average joes and celebrities so any day of the week you could just see you could be at a bar ordering a drink and they're, they're flipping you know um what's her name Tina Turner, Michael Jackson, whatever it may be, right? Just sitting there having a drink. But then after a while, it then turned into being an exclusive celebrity only club and normal punters couldn't get in. And then when normal partners couldn't get in, that sort of started the downturn of Studio 54, which one inside complaining, loads of hassle outside, complaints of the police, fights, all this sort of stuff, until eventually it obviously went down a drain, I think off the back of, again, the, the, the drugs bus they did then, a few other things I forgot in the documentary, but that's the kind of story that they kind of say, right, after the fact. And you feel like sometimes when it comes to Bergheim, that's kind of how it is with there. Like, there's a lot of people that get in, for instance, the guest list queue is always quite big. Um, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of people play there are, you know, regular people like you and I. They have friends also in the industry who want to go in. So there's no, there's no selection policy at the guest list queue from what I can see. Everyone kind of gets in from the guest list. And again, they obviously make up a small minority of the club. When I looked at the guy who had the flip sheet, he was kind of flicking through like three pieces of paper. So it's not that many people. Let's not be get it confused. But there's still a different sort of selection process when it comes to guesses people they come to regular entry people so they get the benefit of the doubt because they know the people that are there but then if you're there in a the queue willing to queue for two and a half hours you should also get a benefit of the doubt because it means you're there for the right reasons right so i thought that was a bit unfair but you know it did serve my purpose in terms of allowing me to get to the front really quickly um then i was you know interrogated somewhat in terms of my uh, uh in terms of why i was there which is also gonna get left a bad taste in their mouth. Like, have you been here before? Da, da, da. Yes, of course I've been here before. Um, you know, you play that game. I was, I was, I was happy to get in and get selected, so that was fine. Once you do get in, you scan your QR code of your Bergheim pass that you get, you can download on your Apple Wallet or whatever it may be. You get the QR code. It's a fairly easy system to go through. Just go on the Bergheim site. You see the admissions thing. Click on it and go through the list of stuff. Um, please to go through. Then you get searched. Um, from what I can see, the search stations and the uh, cloakrooms were somewhat fully staffed because there was a thinking going on now around the little scene of people basically saying that the reason why they can't open later in the night or no later in monday morning supposedly it kind of closes a lot more early than it did in the past because again i wasn't there till, until the end i left before, quite before but usually it closed if i'm not mistaken monday at 7 a.m i've done that a couple of times where you stay right until the end right so you probably all the way through to from saturday all the way through to monday and i remember them saying that it was going to close and now it's closing up about 4 a.m so you know sets are not as long as they used to be and i think panorama bar maybe closes a little bit sooner than that but a lot of people are saying it's because they can't find staff right so they're kind of short staffed and it's been a, a big issue with um a real lack of staff in the hospitality industry ever since the pandemic has sort of i would say kind of slowed down a bit and other parts of the industries have basically opened up mainly hospitality they find it very difficult to refill those spots because people have just basically moved on they maybe realize the money they get on benefits is you know more than enough to kind of sustain their new way of life that they're having now post pandemic wherever it may be who knows the reason why but they're just finding it hard to find people to fill those slots so because of that they're finding it hard to run at full or you know at their full capacity because they don't have the support stuff needed to kind of keep that place running and you have to imagine the place is huge many many people go in there there's a big infrastructure around it that also supports it that we don't see as partners because you're just too high and drunk but there's a, probably a big infrastructure that kind of makes sure that that place is open and functioning the way it needs to be because if there's one thing you can say you don't have to wait at a bar too long the toilets are always you know fairly okay to basically piss and shit in and do whatever you need to go doing like everything is needs to, need is, everything is where it needs to be in terms of lighting all this sort of stuff it's pretty well run sort of place so a lot of that has to do with the stuff that goes on behind the scenes so without the staff they can't basically do it which i understand i get um but from what i saw the search stations were fairly fully staffed so was the ticketing kiosk and so was the cloak rooms fairly easy to get through easy no no lemon squeezy i would say it's a lot more quieter than this than it's ever been it probably resembles 
the last time I went, which was February 2020, that was just before the pandemic happened, um, just before I was aware, you know, what was going on in so much, much of the world. And that was a fairly quiet affair too, quiet in a, in a sense that I could walk right up until the, like usually in the past when I've gone, you couldn't go from like the back of Berkeley all the way into the front of the DJ booth. Like it wasn't an easy route. You sometimes had to go around um, the side where the bar is or have to go on the other side around the back of the speakers, but you couldn't go from the, the plinths and walk straight through the crowd up to the front of the DJ booth. It was impossible to do so, right? Just really hard because it was so, so packed. But this time you could do so because it wasn't as packed as it would need to be. But I'm going to say it's a far more enjoyable clubbing experience for me personally. There's, there's room to you to dance and move around. You're not always bumping into people you can sit down or you can just hang on the side and still kind of catch a vibe next to everything that's going on you can move around from room to room fairly easily because there was a time before when you go in there there'd be a queue to walk up to panorama bar i mean it'd be that crazy or sometimes the queue will be coming out to the toilets will be leading out to the main dance floor be just nuts 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 level so now it's a fairly now it's not as much people there but still it's the same level of kind of excitement and happiness and sort of like you know geek them i'd say hello everyone that's there is a, you can tell they're properly about this life so maybe that goes back to the door picking even though there's the people that are attending there or queuing outside they're probably fans of the place there's no point of picking them it probably still adds to the overall effect i don't know whatever it may be but i still found that to be um a fairly good good experience going forward and um, both rooms of course i need where they need to be i think i really enjoy panorama ball panorama bar more so than i did burkine this time around but again um i'd say the entry process is fairly easy to get through and all that malarkey the only thing i point out only if i point out to end q jumpers there's so many of them now maybe more than there were previously before now a lot of people would say or i would say actually that the pro the reason there probably is a lot of crew jumpers now is because there are a lot of locals who are kind of disgruntled with how it's been handled the re the, you know the opening process and shit and maybe they feel as if that they have, they, that they shouldn't be queuing because they've been going there for years and shit da, 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 da. so there's maybe there's an entitlement in that respect but i just think in general i just think it's super rude and super disrespectful to your other ravers to just assume that your time is more important than anybody else's like you don't need to wait an hour you need to only wait half an hour and i have to wait an hour which i mean i didn't really like that and again i'm not talking about queue jumpers in terms of like you're holding you're in the queue imagine if i'm in a queue and you see me and i'm your friend jump in with me you're more than welcome to and we've seen it happen to many people but people that are just like don't have any friends just decide to walk right to the front or walk near the front i think they deserve to die you really do deserve to die. You deserve to get kicked into the ground some way. And I had to kind of call out a couple of people who jumped in front of me and tried to pretend that they were friends with the guy in front. They clearly weren't. So I asked them, hey, are you guys together or something? He's like, nah. Then why do you just decide to jump in? Like, why do you think my, your time is worth, worth more than mine? Like, we're all queuing here together. Like, why? And, they, and again, it wasn't, it wasn't even like they come and jump a little bit into the front. It's like the queue is really long and they go right to the front or right halfway. And it's like, Jesus Christ, man, complete disregard for your fellow people. And it's like, in the past, it was never like that because they always had security kind of walking up and down the line that would check the queue and shit. I remember a few times, especially when it was really busy prior to the pandemic. But now, of course, they're probably limited resources and not a good use of their time. And also, who gives a shit? So maybe that's the, that's the case. Because in general, who gives a shit if you jump anyway? Because you still have to get you know selected at the door but i just thought that made it a quite unpleasant sort of um side of the queuing process to see so many people just deciding that you know they don't need to wait they just need to jump in front of you i thought that was fairly fairly fucked up so um keep an eye out for that if you're that kind of person again it's maybe it's a me thing i always take those things very personally i get really really angry i can lose my temper very quickly and off the back of that there's nothing more that i like than people just being unfair it's just not cool um just not cool but yeah apart from that really enjoyable experience easy to get into as per usual like i said before it's not really that big of an issue i think people online were making it more of an issue how to get in as usual it's like any other place i think in parts of western europe um covid passport id register on the place you have to basically do um you know it's kind of like you, you, you register there to basically you know say you're in the place and you've got the covid part registered and when you leave you obviously clock out in that respect so they kind of know the numbers and whatnot and they can kind of maybe track the outbreaks you know it's a fairly simple um kind of pattern of kind of uh, going into places and then needs be um obviously once you're in there or cash um so make sure you withdraw some um fairly easy you know what i mean nothing hard to really get into too much so definitely and obviously the what is it the entry now i think it's gone up i think it's like 20 euros now right it's not 18 anymore so it's gone up to 20 re-entry fee i think it's five euros to get back in um that's for the one stamp and then you're allowed to get back in after the fact again if you want to leave again um cloakroom is about one euro fifty 
with I think a 50 euro fee 50 euro one euro fee to get your thing out if you want every time you want to get it back out um pretty easy pretty pretty standard and easy stuff pretty decent drinks menu as per usual great prices on the beers you know you know how it is great sound system so i recommend you definitely check it out now if you want to go again like i said if you don't wait 17 hours in the queue then this is definitely the best time to go especially before the new year's eve um kind of madness starts but definitely go there now i definitely recommend it